ويمكن بتساعد إلنا كمان يعني الفيدباك من مي ورشا بما أنهم فاضين حالكم عليها بيكون كتير منيح هلا هذا الاورينتيشن كنت عاملتها من زمان وعملت شويه تعديلات عليها لحتى تتناسب اكثر مع الجو اللي نحن هلا عم نشتغل فيه ك يعني انت بدك تساعد طلاب الادسيد هو كان مقصود لطلاب برنامج ثاني بس اي ثينك ات وركس فور بوث هن كانوا عبارة عن أربعة سيشنز رح اختصرتهم كلهم لنقدر نمر فيهم هلا إذا لقيت إنه بدك تفصيل أكثر أو رشا ومي إذا لقيتوا إنه لازم نرجع نقسمهم للدفعات القادمة وي كان دو ذات هلا بداية اللمحة العامة عن في أي بي فند حكيتها امبارح فيمكن مالك محتاج إنه نرجع نعيدها وبدنا نحكي بالمنتور شيب بيسكس يعني أساس العلاقة بين الشخص اللي عم يرشد واللي عم بيرشده مع أخذ بعين الاعتبار أنه أنتوا رح تكونوا peers وتتعلموا من بعض بس <تصفيق> اللي, اللي موجود بهذا الكورس بفتكر رح يساعدك آه إلك و- و- وبيعطيك framework لتشتغل مع الطلاب آه بيكون آه آه سهل تمام هل صغير كرم have you ever done that before? Uh, I've never done like online mentoring. Okay, that's very nice. So it teaches uh, in skill, يعني is, it's a, it's يعني a nice thing regardless of where you end up applying it. كنت أعمله بسوريا يعني مع كان عندي initiative وهيك كنت أعمله بسوريا بس إنه ولا مرة online. That's nice. So okay. And I also think لهبا ومي ورشا يعني أنا لما عملت ال research لأتعلم هذا الشيء وبعدين علمه أنا فادني كتير فممكن يفيد كلنا. <تصفيق> هلا بداية أول مرة فكرت بهذا الشيء إنه كنت حاضرة اجتماع مع آلن مليلي، آلن مليلي كان السي إي أو تبع شركة فورد ودخلوه طلبوا منه إنه يجي كسي إي أو لشركة فورد بوقت كانت الشركة مشرفة على الانهيار وكانت طالبة 20 مليار دولار من من الحكومة لتنقذها من من الانهيار فاجى الن مليلي وساعد الشركه بظرف شيء اربع خمس سنين انه ترجع توقف على رجليها وتساعد شركات ثانيه من شركات السيارات انه تحصل على قروض من الحكومه لتوقف على رجليها فكان هذا انجاز كثير منيح والشركه راحت من لايك نيجاتيف ل بوزيتيف 4 بليون دولار ان ريفينيو أنا بمحاسن الصدف انعزمت على هالاجتماع كنت أنا و15 سي او من شركات الأمريكية من بينهم شركة شيكيتا من بينهم شركة اتش بي وشركات تانية يعني تكنولوجي ميديا و فاست موفينج كونسومر جودز اللي كان انترستينج انه هو عمل هالاجتماع لا ياخذ uh, advice from people that are his peers وكان جاي على الاجتماع ومعه الكوتش تبعه فيعني شخص بهالانجازات عازم عالم من ضمنهم انا يلي how I got there ما بعرف uh, ليطلب feedback كانت بالنسبه لي ان اي اوبنر انه كيف الناس يعني مثله عم بي عم عم بيطلبوا الفيدباك ومن بعدها يعني من بعد هي السيشن صرت كثير مهتمه انه دائما انا يكون عندي بحياتي منتورز وانه هي موضوع المنتور شيب يكون شغله جزء لا يتجزا من الشغل تبعنا انه دائما يكون فينا اشخاص عم تعمل منتور شيب لناس ثانيين. فحبيت هون انه شوف اوكي طيب ساعد هي الريليشن شيب انه نفهم وات از ذا منتور هو نيدز منتور شيب Uh, how um, is mentoring relevant to any program? Here was social publishing, but we are here in the Ed Seed. Um, are we mentoring or leading student groups? Or how is it different uh, from what educators do today? So these are the questions that I wanted to answer in these sessions. Before we understand mentorship, we have to understand what is a barrier to success, generally. فشو برايكم انه هو البارير تو سكسس؟ لانه هي موجوده اون ذا سكرين، الجواب هو اتس ذا فير اوف فيلير، اغلب الناس بتخاف 
uh, to fail. And that's the biggest barrier to success. فما بيقدموا على أي شيء لأنه بيتوهموا من إنه I'm going to fail at this, so I'm, I might as well not even try. For that's something that our students think about, we think about in our own lives. Um, but the secondary barriers to success اللي هنا موجودين كتير عند الطلاب تبعنا أول شيء الأهل وهذا بنسمعه من كل الطلاب اللي بنتعامل معهم الكل بيقول لك أبوي ما رادني أدرس هذا الشيء أمي ما بدها يعني أهلي مو فهمانين إنه نحن بدنا ندرس هذا الشيء ثاني شيء الأنظمة التعليمية يلي هي درجة سابعة وعاشرة بالعالم العربي وحتى الأنظمة التعليمية يلي بالغرب مو بالضرورة تكون متماشية مع السكيل سيتس تبع الطلاب <تصفيق> وهذا الشيء يمكن رشا انت من خبرتك بتعرفي مع عمار الله يرحمه انه عانى منه بس انا عانيت منه وكثير ناس ثانيين كمان انه there's no match between the education system وكيف نحن بنتعامل you know, our ability to learn um, في فكره انه the learning stops فبتلاقي انه طالب بالجامعه يمكن متقبل انه يتعلم طب وهندسه بس ما متقبل انه يتطور اخلاقيا ولا بطريقة ثانية وآخر شيء هي الابسنس of mentorship إنه هاي العلاقة إنه يكون في واحد عم بيساعد الثاني ليتعلم معنا موجودة to facilitate the learning uh, Hey, I thought it was an important quote إنه I have not failed I've just found 10,000 ways uh, that don't work فهي فكرة إنه دائما في أساليب مختلفة إنه الواحد يوصل ل... لينجح Uh, it's important in نفكر فيها نحن كمنتورز عم نساعد غيرنا رما فيني اسالك سؤال شور sure. فيني فيني اسال في هو يعني مش تعليق بقصد في جزء كثير كثير اساسي له علاقه مش بس من خوف من الفشل بس نقص الثقه yeah. ونقص الثقه لانه الطريقه اللي نحن بنتعلم فيها انه استاذك بيعرف كل شيء which is not necessarily the case اول شيء شفته بحياتي بجراديويت سكول لما اجيت على امريكا اني انا سالت استاذ سؤال ام قال لي ما بعرف بحاول الاقي الجواب ورد لك اياه فدائما هالعلاقه اللي هي حتكون علاقه ونحن انا عم حاول اعدل تجربتنا كرم في اطار دوركم انتم از منتورز نوت بالمعنى المطلق بس اولسو دوركم از منتورز مع طلابنا اللي هن they are definitely بوضع أو 90% منهم I would say بوضع تحصيل علمي واجتماعي و- و- وكل وضع بيئي ووضع لجوءهم وإلى آخره they're at a much more disadvantage than, than كون ف- منكم أنتم فبالتالي دائما عنده إحساس إن- وهن- هو محبوس و- يعني I think this should be part of the of the approach هو هلا حاسس حاله صحيح نحن محبوسين بس هو محبوس اكثر هو بالنسبه له الحياه كلها از لوك داون رايت لانه لانه بالزعتري بده 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 اذن اي دونت نو اذا قلت لكم اياه بالمره الماضيه بالزعتري yeah. يطلع على الجامعه بده ترخيص من المخابرات تمام له يداوم بالجامعه سو كيب ذس ان مايند بمعنى انه لاك اوف كونفيدنس احساسه انه انت بتعرف كل شيء وهو ما بيعرف وبالفعل جزء منهم كثير من الاولاد يلي دوروا على اليوتيوب ليستكملوا تعليم الزعتري بيكوز ات واز فيري ان اديكويت انه انا كنت اخذ بيوتيوب دروس رياضيات لانه استاذي ما كان يعرف شيء ف اف وي كان فاكتور ذس انتو ذا ايفنتشوال ريليشن شيب اللي رح تربطكم بطلاب من هذا النوع شور يعني اوكي شور وانا برايي انه كل واحد منا اصلا عنده uh, قدر من اللاك اوف كونفدنس لانه كلياتنا عم نتعلم اشياء جديده كل يوم بحياتنا بالذات بعالم التكنولوجيا ف there's always that lack of confidence in an area um, فهي it's important to stress thank you for bringing it up Rasha and Rama they, they joined عن معنى يمنى ومعنى يبا so so mentorship mentorship is a lifelong relationship to develop the mentee skill Uh, by pairing him or her up with more experienced individuals. فعني هاي الفكرة إنه دائما الواحد بيقدر يتعلم وإنه the mentor listens, provides advice, does some coaching, does some counseling, sponsors the mentee, encourages him or her, and models behavior to them. So those are the pillars of mentorship. وهم بحب يعني ارجع اكد انه انتم 
you're in some ways acting as mentors but in other ways you may be mentees yourselves لانه انتوا عم تتعلموا شغلات منهم يمكن انتوا ما بتعرفوها فهي دائما يعني خلوها اخذوها بعين الاعتبار um, mentoring seeks to provide our she a collaboration uh, to expand the knowledge uh, to meet new challenges so hey awal she and no you're collaborating with them a relationship never a direct line of reporting and no and to mum alim you are you have a relationship with them to help them uh, uh, grow uh, a shared responsibility between the mentor and mentee so hada juz minno antum btamlku al responsibility wa juz al tani hinna Uh, and then um, a voluntary relationship that is built on trust. Mahada Majbur, it's it's a trust uh, relationship. What men- mentorship is not? It is not training. Uh, it is not a corrective uh, action uh, for substandard performance. In Nujay Bil Asai, and I'm Allah Latani, and you're not understanding, you're not understanding, because you're not understanding, I'm coming to teach you. Uh, it's not a one way relationship there's a give and take in it uh, it uh, is not an assumption of individual responsibility inna huwa al mas'ul wala anta al mas'ul anhu and it's not an obligation or guarantee to help someone's career wa hada shi hinna lazim yafhamu mithl ma antu fahmanin any questions so far Uh, please feel free and not atuni is and con questions otherwise i'm just going to keep going uh, and and maybe you know a lot of this uh, and if you do yeah and you just consider it a refresher a successful mentorship relationship relies on the long term commitment between the two and how long term ممكن تكون شهر شهرين ثلاثه او انه يعرف هذا الشخص انه بيقدر يرجع لك believe it or not one of my professors in the jama لليوم انا بتواصل معاها online and i seek her advice in some things who she seeks my advice in other things لانه هي بتدرس women's leadership program for women from the middle east هي ب بجورج واشنطن university بامريكا فمرات بتجي لي بتقول لي شو صاير هلا بالامارات مع الشباب الصبايا uh, to kind of figure out or get oriented on, on where things are um, so it's a long term commitment it's a two way conversation vulnerability and mutual trust are key to the success on بالنسبه لل vulnerability i would love for you to watch a, a video if you haven't seen it a ted talk by um brene brown on vulnerability um and i I'll, i can send you a link بعد هذا الشيء it's a very important video for anybody to watch it's a two way relationship and um being impeccable with your words and actions is a very important part of mentorship wa hada shi mumkin bil video taba brene brown tisma'u inno shakhs lazim ykun ktir haris ala ikhtiyar al kalimat taba'u wa at tasarruf taba'u rah ykun dalil akbar ala the success of a mentorship relationship min al haki lanno the mentee will observe you and will go by your actions more than they go by your words so that's something important and the question rama yeah and the question probably in general fi ay shi btamli la tahaddid saqf al tawaqqa'at yani yani the ceiling of expectations in this relationship is there is there something you actually go over Well, uh, this is not something you spell out. Uh, it's it's something that develops in the process. أكيد يعني جزء من اللي عم نحكي يمكن لازم أنتو تداولو مع الطلاب يعني يعني تحكو إنه what what this relationship will be and what it won't be. إنه أنا مو هون مثلاً لا حل لك وظائفك أنا مو هون إنه يعني وأنا هون لساعد بكيت وكيت وكيت وهي يعني it's very individualized يعني انتو رح تتفقوا عليها هاي القواعد مع الطلاب اللي عم تشتغلوا معاهم مو مو ضروري تكون العلاقه بين كرم والطالب اللي بده يشتغل معه مثل العلاقه بين يمنى والطلاب اللي بده تشتغل معاها يعني ممكن يكون في تفاوت وهذا التفاوت ممكن يكون شخصي انه انا قد ايه قادر اقدم وقد ايه انت مستعد تتجاوب معي سو اتس اتس وان اون وان 
probably it's kind of a, a يعني the difference between method and 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 the, the end result انه انا بضلني بحس انه مثل مثل دراستك بالنهايه ما رح تتذكر كل شيء حشو براسك وانت عم تروح على الجامعه بس one day you will find out that that being a graduate or an undergraduate student or whatever has given you a, met- a method and that's what they're probably missing يعني قد ما قلنا انه نحن ما بدنا اياها تكون علاقه بدنا اياها علاقه بيرز مش علاقه an up and down person but technically speaking those people have no knowledge of what a real teaching experience is yeah. and probably this is a window you can open to them مش بشكل ينطردوا من الجامعه انه يروحوا يقولوا له للاستاذ انه انت ما فهمت شيء بس in a way teach them how to You know, it's okay not to know. It's okay if your professor doesn't know. Find out and 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 reach out. يعني أحب إنه من هذا الأسلوب إنه إذا كان هدفنا توسيع مداركون وآفاقون لأنه whether we like it or not, we are more privileged and and yeah. we do have a window that they don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, this is just a slide that I I've shared. Ya ret lo into tajau la utrajua to just kind of orient yourself to the differences between the different areas. And, and, and set the demarcation points between them. Yani, is that a young talib who has a no if he be doit alamo? I want you to help me learn how to use Wikipedia. That becomes a teaching experience. Fa, you stop, you say, today we're actually instructing. And then you finish that instruction and then you go back to the mentoring relationship or the coaching relationship. فيعني هي ممكن انتم تدرسوها لحالكم. Um, the, the, the other thing is I, I wanted to, to emphasize in no, in no, يعني there's kind of a leadership role that you're assuming in this relationship. Um, لانه انتم you are privileged, لانه you're in spaces where they're not. Um, so I would also like you to reflect on what great leaders inspire in you. and how that might translate to your position of leadership with, with our, our um, students. And from my perspective, these are the leaders that inspire me. And, and what I see in them is these three areas. You know, there's always a why, uh, an understanding of the cause or the purpose. Uh, there's always a how, um, you know how they've done things that they, they do, you know, and they explain to you the how. And then there's a what, you know, uh, what to know about what you're doing. You know, you have to explain what your purpose in life is, how you do what you do, and, and, and what you're concerned about. And, and also invite the students to do the same when they're reflecting on their work. And you can always have purpose behind doing something. There's a, I don't know if you've come across this term, efforting. You know, mm-hmm. there, a lot in the Arabic world, the students are taught to effort. They put mm-hmm. in a lot of effort, but they don't know why they're doing it. They don't know mm-hmm. how to do it. They don't know how to conclude it properly. So there's a big difference between efforting and doing. Efforting, like I'm sitting on a treadmill. I'm sitting on a treadmill. But, you know, there's a, If you know why you're doing something, you may find a very short way to do it that doesn't require a lot of efforting. Um, for, for that's something to be, to be mindful of. And something great leaders are always uh, yeah, mindful of is self-reliance. Self-reliance starts at a very early age. Uh, ufinas grow up to be extremely self-reliant. Ufinas, they grow up to be extremely dependent. وللاسف بعالمنا يعني الامومه مرات it's more of خليني ورجي اولادي كيف يتعلقوا فيي to be dependent on me for life وبس يوصلوا لبعد الجامعه we flip the equation and now I become dependent on them for life which is a bad formula in both directions عيد الام اليوم شوي شوي علينا as in of self reliance is to really teach someone how to stand on their own two feet without needing you or needing anybody else ma malish amal taliq sghir ya awal shi andi atirad ala surat al leaders ma hatta ghir mara wahde wala zalt minnik well i mean yeah that's a very valid point 
يعني بيل جيتس بالذات ما هو بيقول ما له ما قدر يوصل لشيء بلا مرته معك حق اعطي تعليق على الليدر شيب كمان لا تنسوا يا شباب وصبايا انتم حتعلمون يعني وي جونا ليد باي يور بيهيفير يعني انتم مثلا بدكم تعلمون البيشنس فبدكم تورجون انتم اذا انكم بيشنت بدكم تعلموهم يكونوا متواضعين بدكم انتم تكونوا متواضعين بدكم تعلمون انه يكونوا على الوقت يكونوا ملتزمين بشغلات معينه بدكم انتم تتصرفوها فهون شيء يمكن هي التجربه حتخليكم بلاقيها انه حلو ترفعكم اكثر لانه بتخليكم تضطروا تلتزموا بشغلات لانه هن عم يراقبوكم وعم يشوفوا كيف عم تتصرفوا ليقلدوكم فهي كمان يعني علاقه حلوه بدكم. اي اسك كويستشن؟ يس I uh, maybe I missed this because I came a bit late, so I'm sorry about that. Um, what are the students being told between you? What relationship do they feel like they're entering into? That's a good question, actually. Rasha, you can answer it. You can No, what what relationship do the students look like are being told they're going to get into? They haven't been told yet. And this is part of لما بنقولكم إنه نحنا عم نتعلم كمان هلا ونحنا عم نحكي معكم خطر لي إنه probably we need to do something with the students before we مش خطر لي والله كنت بدي بعت لون before meeting with before putting you together into اثنين بدنا نجتمع معهم إلهم ونقولهم إنه نحنا هلا المشروع بدأ يتنفذ ونحكي معهم more or less بنفس اللي عم تحكي راما بس مع طلابنا كمان لنشوف وين وين توقعاتهم إلهم مثل مثل الجلسة اللي عملناها معهم الأسبوع الماضي على لا على التعيين جست لحتى نجمع كل عائلة الأدسيد مع بعض بعتقد إنه لازم نعمل هالشي ونخبرهم يا من حيث المبدأ كان بدنا اياها تكون نافذه على العالم بالنسبه لهم، جزء كبير منهم مثل ما قلت لك يمنى بتفهمي اللغه الكولوكويال تبعي السوريه ولا دي يو مي تو سبيك ان انجلش؟ لا لا بفهم بفهم تمام <تصفيق> فجزء منه انه نحن وي ونتد ذيس تو بي ا ويندو اون ذا وورلد، بدنا هدول شباب محبوسين تقريبا تجربتهم التعليميه كانت كثير 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 محدوده وذات نوعيه رديئه بشكل عام عانوا مشاكل نفسية كبيرة ثلاث ارباعهم صاروا معيلين لأسرهم من وقت ما صار الواحد منهم عمره 14 و 15 سنة في شيء منهم ما بيعرفوا أهلي أنه أخذوا التوجيه لأنه مفتكرينه بس عم يشتغل بالعمار ويقطف عنب ويرصف طرقات ف... فthey're coming from that point جزء منا بعتقد حتكون من منطق أحيانا ممكن تكون small talk Unfortunately, it could be lacking depth. يعني ما بعرف وأحيانا كتير أنا الطريق لأني حطيت لكم اهتمامات هدول الأولاد قلت يمكن بتبدأ بشغلات مثل اللي حطيناها إذا في عندكم اهتمامات مشتركة حتى لو بالأول تحكوا عن سوكر وبعدين تنقلوها لميني سكيتس تحكوا فيه على السوكر بالإنجليزي ولا uh, and, and try to adjust language levels uh, by talking about a topic of interest So one of the top يعني one of the purposes was definitely trying to improve their English language but the other was actually just opening up some some window that is not readily available to them. هدول ناس يعني لبنان اللاجئين السوريين بلبنان وضعهم أحسن بس I would say 60 to 70% of our students are from Zaatari and not from all over Jordan where they have the chance to move when they want to. Although right now we're bringing on another like 19 students that are uh, from all over. Yeah, like one of the girls that you you've seen on your list is is a Palestinian, uh, but she's currently in Brazil. Uh, she's already produced like a couple of videos on Palestinian experience in in Hamas, Syria. Wahid Minnon, his mother is a graphic designer, and he draws amazing graphics. I can I can actually share with you some so that you ha or or probably I'll sh I'll tell you who he is, and then whoever ends up mentoring him might ask him to share that either on a phone or while while chatting just to kind of yani get to know who they have. Some of them have amazing skills. But the rest we'll have to figure out in a meeting that we need to organize with them. Yeah. If I may add just one little thing, uh, whatever, all what, uh, what uh, Rasha said is correct. Uh, however, we have to remember they are also survivors. 
and they've mm-hmm. been through a lot and they endured a lot so that a lot of them have strength so yes we we they've been through a lot of uh, hard times they are living in hard time now but um, Yani, to be able to make it through everything you've been through, Yani, they lost family members, they lost uh, homes, they've seen, uh, Yani, their villages, their houses being bombed. So experiencing that and still wanting to live, and wanting to study, this is, to me, is a strength or a skill that I do respect a lot. Right. Yeah, I, I don't know if I gave the impression that it's otherwise. And I'm all, you know, I felt that their horizons are much more limited. And by having a window on the world, it will it will enlarge. But that, I didn't in any way speak in a dissing or disrespecting way. Bilax. أي واحد فيهم اللي حققوا أكثر من اللي كلنا حققنا ونحن على أكف الراحة achieving what we can achieve we are the people of privilege they're not yeah. they've gotten here with much less than what we did يعني. yeah yeah I think that's part of the reason I was asking because I mean like you were saying Russia whether we like it or not we are in a position where we're a lot more privileged uh, than they are and sometimes that comes across whether we intend intend it to or not in conversation so I'm very wary that I don't want them to be sort of going into the relationship expecting something in particular or for example expecting something that's more friendly and instead they find us for example coming in and saying okay this is what we're going to do and being really structured or the other way around that they expect something very structured and expect particular outputs and instead we're just talking to them like a friend so it's good to kind of know what they want so that we can help them as best as possible and what they're expecting so that we're not sort of operating outside of that yeah i just want yeah. to build on that point um if that's okay um i've done a lot of research and work with refugees in jordan they were a bit older so they were 17 and 16 um but i think one important thing is to actually think about you know how, what expectations you set from the very beginning because even though they're very resilient um so for example i had a lot of questions when i was working with them from female students for example how did you how are you a single 30 year old female still studying living abroad um my parents for example are pressuring me to get married so i think there could be questions that become quite personal and where you have to answer in some way and i think maybe we can create a space as well where uh, mentors can if they have you know a specific challenge answering students about anything they can we can come together and kind of discuss that because I think um, I guess my point is that conversations can be can be become difficult and even though they are very resilient we do come from a more privileged context and yet we have some sh- we have some similarities and for example as culture or the coming from an Arabic background and so it, they will reflect on that and wonder how they could, for example, get there or what to do. And we obviously want to give them hope, but also think about what limitations there are. That's very true. Um, and I think maybe um, one way to do that, bad man amil on orientation, mm. is if we do have like a an icebreaker session where we're just. Uh, getting you guys together with them and and moderating f- with some Q and A's to un- uncover how these yeah. individual relationships might work between you and the the students you uh, end up working with. Emma, would, yeah, you that's a great break idea. Room? would you do a break room thing in that sense? Or yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. figure it out. Best, yeah. you know, probably will be guided more by how by the interests that they expressed and see if you prefer to work yani with certain students just by way of, of breaking the ice okay yeah so so moving on with the orientation and now the, no, the role of a mentor is to help maintain focus on the objective ask leading questions facilitate collaboration uh, and then maintain a pace uh, of of the experience and then both parties journaling the journey and kind of documenting what the experience is. And I would encourage you from the get-go to do that yourself and to ask of the students to do that. video log, whatever, but they should, after every session, uh, put together their thoughts on paper and share those with you. Um, 
Here I wanted to go over the emotional state of the mentee because I think it's important. I know a lot of you have worked with refugees. Maybe there are some insights here for you that you haven't come across and maybe you can add insights for me and us um, to add to this presentation for others. I'd worked with an organization called the Hani Qadumi Scholarship Foundation, which worked with Palestinians, um, men in West Bank or Gaza. Um, some of them were refugees from Lebanon, others were um, coming out of their own homes. But that experience had definitely taught me a lot at this camp that we ran uh, in Urdun. And uh, I mean, I, I got to really, I mean, um, so, so, some of them were, were nerve wracked. We were, they were going through uh, a, an ideation process for an entrepreneurship uh, uh, program. And, and some of them I mean, flourished and others were crying in the bathrooms because they felt like uh, the stress was too much of the, the, the fun program we were putting them through, which included like uh, uh, paintball, uh, exercises and you know very very kind of physical exercises um, and others were offended by things that I thought were supposed to be inspiring reactions so um, I thought okay a couple of things um, I'm, I'm just gonna move past this but a couple of things that that were takeaways for me uh, was Awalshi and not, and not for a lot of them, they were receiving an education of the mind without an education of the heart. And I felt that that was really, I mean, you know, th there was an absence of real education for them. Fayani, think of your role as maybe offering some of that uh, to them uh, or giving them the space to explore that. Um, um, as part of this, I wanted you to reflect on the psychological and emotional state of a Syrian refugee uh, or a Syrian entrepreneur. It sounds like some of them have been, you know, some of you have been through that. Looking at their ages, their social pressures, their aspirations, or their traditional conditioning. Um, what are the emotional challenges uh, that they're I mean, experiencing? Um, and here, thinking about uh, the financial stress, the, uh, how they manage stress in general, the intensity of the feeling, doubt, the confusion, and lack of uh, self-confidence, and lack of self-confidence, operating with too little guidance and too many restrictions that are con you know, spatial restrictions or... or um, uh, yani imposed by their environment in the camp. Um, and then the social pressures uh, that they, they go through. Um, also the idea that maybe some of them have never been thinking of emotional intelligence and, and what that means. And maybe you guys introducing that concept and having the space to discuss it with them and, and talk about emotional intelligence. Are any of you unfamiliar with emotional intelligence? Everybody is familiar. All right, great. So I'll just skip, skip that. Um, and I think the other thing is that the, the whole uh, science of micro expressions and, and, and how refugees um, have this emotional suppression going on. And no, but his through through talking with them, you know, there's this big wall uh, that you're not past. And sometimes that wall breaks in mid-conversation and other times it's so thick and, and guarded, you know, um, it's hard to get past it. Bizzat al jarib in Sa'adun yamlu al campaign tabaun, there's a huge uh, barrier to them really feeling emotions or sharing emotions in a regulated way. Um, so I've, I've put a couple of slides that, that you know, talk about that and you know, emotional regulation, what that means and how uh, a lot of you may have been through experiences that now allow you to regulate your emotions where they are in a space where that's not available to them. Um, uh, 
situational selections and no mentors can help mentees select situations that would be preferable to them um, and, and help guide them through that. Um, um, what would that mean? Be, be in, in action, yeah. you know, to, to select a situation. So, 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 Masalan, let's take any, uh, within the framework of their university education. Um, in the context of the classroom, to find a way to approach a teacher or an advisor one on one in less threatening environments that may be easier to manage. Uh, that's one, one form of situation selection. And no, okay, is take this conversation one on one and see if that is more comfortable to you. Uh, if you are being, you, you mentioned this to me, and you know, one of our friends, one of our students is being uh, kind of bullied by his fellow students because he's standing out and trying to do something beyond what they're doing. Fa, uh, you know, we are helping him create a new situation by, uh, you know, uh, and okay, Masalan, don't, don't talk about these things with them. Oh, uh, we are stepping in and making it, uh, sh we're showing him how what he's doing is so much better. Um, so that's, that's a kind of a modifying the situation. Um, a situational modification and no, in no using role playing to identify and transform challenges to learning opportunities. From the Mahalla, case that that I uh, gave, but also thinking about their circumstances. Yani um, non, you know, maybe in environments that are not conducive to learning. Okay, let's talk about the environment. Kif al wahed mumkin yudros? When mumkin yudros? There were there were simple modifications that we recommended. You know, tab inta lesh lesh am bas am betfakir in the taalim hek. Why don't you go online and, and take audio classes? I, actually, I have a, an example. Marra, uh, I was training for the Shabab in Palestine, in the West Bank. And I was able to study with them in the institution. And what I asked was, what did I ask? What did I ask? What did I ask? I asked them, what's the deal? All of them were frustrated and we were on a Naabar Qalandia at the end of the day. Okay, طيب علقتوا على المعبر شو بتعملوا بالمعبر لأنه they're visibly stressed out. هن الواحد سبع ساعات بيجي بدون نتف حاله من قعد من دخن. طب have you guys considered audio books? شو يعني audio books? At the time ما كان واردة بالمرة بالنسبة لهم ولا مفكرين فيها من شي خمس ست سنين. فصرت لهم شو audio books? How to get access to audio books? Um, I got a lot of positive feedback بعدها that you know, all of a sudden the experience of القاعد على معبر قلنديا became an educational experience for them. قاعد عم بخلص كتاب بالقاعدة. It's just kind of a modifying the situation to make it um, you know, more productive for them instead of a frustrating one. By the, by the way, the kids that we have have a, an hour and a half each way between the camp and the and the Amama. university. So that's a very nice idea you might share with them. And then you can do that while you're on the bus. You don't need to get dizzy because you're reading while you're while the bus is moving. Right. Hey, attention uh, deployment in Nakif, a mentor can suggest meditational techniques to help students focus inward on positive aspects of a situation. Yani nobody in our world is invited to do that. Unfortunately, رغم كل الصلاة يلي بيصلوها, ما حدا بيربط بين الصلاة والmeditation using this as a way to really uh, expand the positive energy that you have inside. ف, ف, this is a big space that you can explore with the students and be able to help them through it. لأنه الواحد بحس إنه هن stressed out ومعجوئين بحالهم and this is available to them uh, where they are. Um, and then encouraging uh, the mentees to reframe stressful or disappointing situations and guiding them how to learn and grow through these situations. Um, that's something that you also have the ability to do. 
uh, in our online training um, um, this was a very powerful experience to them كانوا يحسوا حالهم كمان very stressed out in classroom environments لأنه they come from very sheltered lives ويستحوا وما يقدروا يحكوا والشباب are dominating the classrooms particularly the engineering classrooms so you might find techniques and ways to kind of advise them on how to deal with these things um, uh, by, by kind of empowering them رامي مالي تعليق هلا إذا عم بحكي شغلة أنت you're gonna mention later so tell me this is gonna be so I, can, I don't repeat something you're gonna say just uh, when when مثل ما يعني وقت عم تحكي راما إنه when you you they have a problem and you want to help them find the better situation try always to ask them first to find alternatives لأنه sometimes if you offer a solution من عندكم it might not be applicable be بالوضع لا تنسوا your universities the countries you're living in are very different. So uh, you, you might get them in trouble without even you know thinking about it. So is that like and I cannot do this or what what else you can do? Let's find solutions together. Uh, you can tell him, well I do this in my way. Sometimes what what you can do he he or she cannot do in Jordan or in Lebanon. The other thing um, هلا انا بدي انبهكم على شغله لكم لانه it might be emotionally شوي stressful لكم uh, انا I, i've been working with refugees since 2003 and i remember the first few days what كنت عم بعمل interviews and listening to their stories and how they fled and torture and rape and and, and i used to collapse and cry فبصير عندكم feeling guilty i used to say like why it's not me, why I was able to have a better life, blah, blah. Hatta now, sometimes, because I live in the U.S. and I work sometimes with people inside and I train them, I feel like, why do I have everything and they don't have electricity? So this is, they call it the survival uh, guilt. So when you start feeling this way, what you can tell yourself is that, okay, I am here, I'm able to do, and I'm able to help these people. I'm gonna make that person get over his problem and I'm gonna help them become a better person. I'm gonna help them discover what they can do. So, and it's okay though, it's okay to feel bad. It's okay to feel like you wanna cry. It, it's okay to feel that, God, life is not uh, fair, you know? But how to, uh, to get the best out of it? Or you know what? I'm here, he's here, and I'm going to help him and help him. That's my mission. The last thing, uh, sorry, I got to get rid of it. And the fact that maybe it's a little bit about the questions that they ask you these days, it might get personal. I think it's important to, to put boundaries. يعني وقت بده يبلشوا يسالوكم اه عندك بوي فريند عندك جيرل فريند كيف حياتكم الى اخره تقول لهم هي الشغلات نحن ما راح نناقشها كثير هي شغلات خاصه خلينا نركز على تعليمك آه هلا بيحكوا لكم هن شغلات خاصه يمكن على مشاكلهم مع عائلتهم مع كذا listen but try to take more than you give آه لانه it, it, it can get complicated ف it's okay to say i don't want to talk about this subject that that's fine let's focus on your future it, nothing wrong with this um, it, that's all the points i wanted to say thanks uh, yeah i have a question Fadal. yeah uh, so that does like out of the things that we shouldn't talk about uh, i mean based on your vast and accumulated experience have you faced any religious sensitivities or the the mentees asking about the religious background of the mentors or like talking about religion and these things, do they do they form any barriers or? Yeah, I've, I mean, I've actually had, a, I've been in a lot of situations. يعني بداية من ال الطلاب اللي كانوا يجوا عنا على على الإمارات اللي عم بتطببوا يعني يحكوا شغلات إنه آ مثلاً إنه هاي ال ال volunteer مسيحية أو يعني عارف كيف first just observation second surprise إنه كيف هي عم بتساعدنا ولا شيء أو إنه هذا يهودي كيف عم بيساعدنا أو شيء so so there definitely is that and I mean my my immediate and consistent reaction is we are humans before we are anything else we are humans before we have religions we are humans before we have 
uh, nationalities. And, and therefore, um, yani, is that if I'm comfortable enough to dive in and explain more, I do. Otherwise, I just cut it and say, we're here as humans. discrimination against any religion, any kaza. You can have your opinion, I can have mine, but we can't even go into these issues. What I want to say is, and I always tell you, that the only goal of any religion is that we are a human, 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 that's it. And your exit is always, as a government of America, Probably, Rama, we need to add this little orientation to Baum. Sure. Just by way of a comment. Sure, sure. Um, so, so another just yani, technique to always encourage with them is to, to, to do these physical adjustments and, not, and not encourage them to think of themselves as not uh, uh, beings that are walking around with a body that sole purpose is to carry a brain but that your physical body is there to actually be used, uh, be used in productive ways to relax you, be used in productive ways to stay healthy for the long term, and be used in productive ways to meditate. You might want to recommend Kaman Elon as ways to, uh, to relieve stress uh, on themselves. Um, uh, so just a, a final quote, a mentor is someone who allows you to see the hope inside yourself. So that's something to, to bear in mind and you're there to show them hope. I want to recommend another video for you guys to watch if you haven't, uh, which is Sir Ken Robinson's TED Talk on bringing on a learning revolution. Do you have any questions on what we've covered so far? The Mm, a kind of question or I'm not sure if it's like a question or just a thought kind of um, but I think I, especially from the last meeting the other day when we were talking I think everyone's kind of interested in keeping the relationship quite horizontal and peer-to-peer -peer rather than it being in any way vertical or top-down um, and I think like an important thing to bear in mind and I mean I'm saying this for myself as well but I guess also for everyone is that like the extent to which we are able to kind of um, change their lives or really help them or really improve it is quite limited. Um, I mean, none of us are licensed counselors and we can, we can kind of, we can do our best, but I guess, I mean, I would imagine that what's most helpful is being there for them and engaging in that peer-to-peer -peer interaction. And maybe in some ways we'll be able to add something to them and they'll be able to add something to us. But I guess if we go into it with the kind of vision or anticipation that we're going to completely help them and uh, change their lives, then we might end up being a bit disappointed and we might end up sort of having a bit of a vertical twist on the relationship. So that yeah, was just a thought I had. Yumna, that's a very, very good um, um, any point and thank you for raising that. And I want to emphasize that the the, the over, uh, overview that I'm providing is really more for your benefit to learn about mentor-mentee relationship and know what is and what isn't a part of what you're doing with the students. So thank you for, for bringing that up again, absolutely. And it's also here, to, you know, this, this kind of, these guidelines are to help you think of ways that you may help um, that you might have not considered before. But it's certainly not to burden you with the responsibility that you can't uh, you know, assume at any time. And I also wanted to say to May's point earlier, in, uh, um, if you feel burdened by a conversation that you're having with the students, you can come to us. Mishbas and not feel bad about it or feel uncomfortable about it, but do come to me, May or Rasha to help you out with it. If you feel like there's something that is uh, either you know makes you feel overwhelmed or you feel like is beyond what you are able to address uh, with, with them. Hala, there, there are kind of two additional 
modules to this. We've been online for an hour, so I'm conscious of the time. We can either soldier through them or save them for another time. Oh, is it Tafetu, we can stop here and, and not do anything any anymore. Should I icon one, two, or three? Who's in yeah, favor okay. of okay, one? Keep going. Yeah, I came late anyway. So yeah. one is keep going, two is stop and do another session, three is we're done. Uh, how much longer are the next two sessions? Probably another 20 minutes. Okay, yeah, perfect. I'm happy to keep going. Others okay? Yeah. Mashi, okay. Yes, I'm fine as well. Okay, perfect. So um, this this particular session, um, I think, is is about um, uh, language and the impact it has on relationships, uh, on relationship. So um, starting with a question is, what's the number one reason early stage investors would put money in a startup? Anyone have the answer to that? I guess either because they feel that they believe in the vision or because they think it's going to be uh, fruitful. So, uh, so it's going to bring them income, basically profits. Any other thoughts? The number one in investors, early stage investors invest is in the person that presents and how comfortable or confident they feel in that person. They may be very shaky on the idea. They may be very shaky on the prospects of the idea of making money, but they believe in the entrepreneur and they go for it based on that, that belief. So it's the confidence that the entrepreneur uh, conveys um, and some of the other attributes that the, that the, the entrepreneur conveys. So language, verbal or, and nonverbal, has a profound impact on one's emotional state, relationships, and careers. That's a very broad statement. And from my experience, it's if you can speak well, you will go through life much better than if you can't. And, and that spoken and non-spoken language, you know, language is verbal and nonverbal. And the verbal um, contains two aspects to it. Uh, shared expressions and then concealed micro expressions and both of them are very important to effective communication um, and I find in, in working with a lot of youth that that's a very invaluable skill to impart on them and make them at the very least aware of it if they're not aware um, this is a, a chart that I found that uh, the communication impact 7% verbal 38% vocal your pitch, your rhythm, your, vo uh, your volume. And then 55% is based on the facial uh, expressions and micro expressions. So we're, you know, not, we think of ourselves as nahna and verbal animal, but really it's still, a lot of it is based on the nonverbal um, uh, aspects of how we communicate that people make judgments based on. For, for here, I usually go through an exercise with people to say, okay, describe your first encounter with someone you, who left an impression on you, whether that's a positive or negative, and just contemplate that, contemplate, contemplate that. Uh, but in, for the, for the uh, purposes of this, you know, but not to want to, want to be brief, um, look at that and, and kind of what, how you might have judged this person on the left or right. Um, so the first one may be discounting or not sahonaji. The second thing we do is, is, is judgment. These are the seven steps of a first encounter with a human being. Uh, so you may discount someone or not. You may over uh, kind of like blow them up if you felt that visually they were appealing. Uh, you pass judgment, whether that's positive or negative. Um, next, um, you offer eye contact uh, and based on that eye contact you make additional judgments um, you may handshake you may you know depending on how they greet you i've learned a long time ago not to extend my hand but i i even find it offensive i extend my hand okay i'm not reaching out my hand to extend your hand but it could 
it presents awkwardness sometimes, but there are other ways, yani real handshake, you know. Sometimes it's a grip that's so strong, and sometimes for all of that has meaning, and it it you start building up your impression of that person based on these things. And then the power of the smile or the lack thereof, you know, when someone doesn't smile at you, um, makes you feel uncomfortable sometimes. The next steps are the body language and how that body language, uh, um, you know, may uh, give you more confidence and, and comfort and care versus distance you more from the person that you are with. And of course, body language can mean different things in different contexts, but it's definitely um, something that, uh, like for example, mirroring. Uh, they say that in, in, in business, in the business context, when someone starts mirroring your behavior, then you can sell them anything or you, you know that you're in a position of power because they're mimicking your behavior. So those are you know, subtleties that, that one has to uh, be aware of. And what nonverbal communication or body language it means, masalan posture, if it's slouching versus upright, projecting confidence, the head movement, the hand movement, etc. All things to be to be aware of. And to help the other person you're speaking with become aware of because it's impacting how they're being uh, perceived. So those are all um, uh, things that I would invite you to think about. This is the step-by-step, step, so I'd leave that for you to also look at. Um, another quote by someone who's successful. Um, and then um, I just had other examples of, of much of the same thing. You know, great mentors communicate in warmth of acceptance and open posture, uh, replacing the crossed arms, um, and then uh, their pace is indicative of their openness to hear and interact versus trying to, you know, rush you through things. And then um, I thought this is important that most people don't listen to understand, they listen to reply. Uh, so active listening is something I encourage you to do. Um, uh, become an active listener more than like, I'm just kind of hearing and thinking about what I'm going to respond to you with what active listening looks like. These are some kind of tips on active listening. Verbal signs of active listening is that there is positive reinforcement. So when I'm speaking, uh, the person in front of me who's actively listening is giving me positive reinforcements. They remember what I say. Um, they listen to facts and feelings. Uh, they ask relevant questions. They reflect, ask for clarification, and they summarize or are able to summarize what, what I've said. Um, I, have a, I have a comment, Rama, or a question. Okay. Considering uh, that we will most probably be sitting across each other on a chair with Zoom, any alternative you can offer to uh, the body language that, I mean, probably some of those uh, items that you've listed would, would, uh, would apply, but, but not all of them. And I would add to that, that there is usually, especially in the verbal sense, when you don't have a lot to, especially through video conferencing, there is something about the sincerity and about the animation of, of like, I mean, if I look at you during this presentation, I find your heart is part of it. And, you know, whereas you can just simply be a little bit more solemn. So maybe if you can think for us uh, of, of the, body language in a in a virtual world what is it that can impart that kind of feeling when there are no handshakes there are no body language standing up or just doing this like i mean i'm always worried about what to do with my chin it's very long so i find <laughs> myself in all of the videos doing this all the time to cover it up uh, it's not really a way to just tell people anything or to or or probably that i'm trying hardly to zip it and not to talk but maybe you can think with us aloud what is it that you can do for a body language in the virtual world now with social distancing yeah that's interesting i mean i, I haven't thought of it but i think i from from just yeah, I mean, the facial expressions and micro expressions are key yeah and they're universal 
you know, there are, and I would invite you to look, if you guys haven't delved into this, to look at facial expressions and micro expressions and learn about them. Leanno, they genuinely are very indicative of what the person in front of you really feels. Hey, I have my for now. Um, but if I think of anything else, I'll let you know. Does anybody else have any thoughts on that? Okay. Um, so, I mean, benefits of active listening, uh, you know, um, you get more cooperation, it improves the relationship, it promotes trust and respect, and a better understanding of people as a whole. So that's um, uh, part of it. And then these are some ideas on how to read your mentee, um, uh, improve your emotional intelligence, develop your capacity for empathy, spot concealed emotions and invite them to uh, speak about them or explore them, improve your relationships, avoid using words like I'm going to make you do this or I'm going to teach you this or I'm always invite people to consider, to think, uh, um, talk about we're working on this together, we're collaborating to reach an objective, I want to partner with you instead of I want you to do this and I will do that. Um, I think all of these uh, might be useful. And then uh, I thought this was another important quote, uh, that you want to be able to speak their language to get into their hearts instead of, um, you know, just uh, getting into their heads. And there's a great TED talk on body language that um, I'd also invite you to, to look at. Um, Will you be sending all of these links to the TED Talks that you sure. have, Rama, please? Sure. So we have four more minutes uh, for me to keep my promise uh, of uh, 20 minutes. Are you guys feeling like this is a learning experience? Are you gaining from it or is this? Okay. Good. So the next is um, uh, the mentoring relationship. Um, so what's the toughest decision you've had to uh, do in your career or in your work so far? That's a question. You want answers from us? Eh? God. I think, I, I don't know if it's the, um, the toughest decision, but I mean, it's just a typical one. It's the first one that came to my head. But I had a point after uh, I stopped working at the UN where I was kind of deciding whether to go into the private sector or the public sector. Um, and so I was essentially considering whether I should continue at the UN or whether I, or sort of go into the development field or whether I should go into the private sector so I make some money and earn some skills and all that. Uh, so that was a decision and I ended up staying in the public sector. Have you watched, by the way, Dan Pelota's uh, TED Talk? Uh, is he the effective altruism guy? It, it might be. That might be the title of it. But he, would... I think so. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a link to that. But yes, that's, please. It's all about the making that decision between one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's the first decision that comes to my mind. Yeah. But it is a pretty tough decision. Um, so I think the, the reason why I'm asking is um, mentoring is a relationship between, excuse me, two individuals, as we said, um, on a mutual desire for development towards career or uh, educational objectives. Fanny, in a way, even though you're not going to help these students, uh, uh, you know, you're not going to change their lives, you are going to be with them for key decisions in their life. Uh, especially some of them are making choices between different uh, courses or uh, yani different uh, um, uh, study tracks that could make or break their life. Enough, they might get into something that they're not uh, going to get a job in or she or, or It is an, an important relationship. And, and like I said, you guys are peer to peer, but you will find yourself in the capacity of a mentor at one point in the lifetime of your work with them. Um, so in a way, this mentorship is a social agreement between you and them uh, that, that you're entering into a relationship um, of some sort. 
uh, in a successful mentoring relationship, uh, there are shared values. So you have to explore the, the common values between you and them. Um, if it's going to work, it has to be fun. And I, I use this picture specifically, Len, and the guy on the right, Maher Adura, he was the head of um, Accenture Middle East for many years, and he was wildly successful financially. And then a tragic thing happened to him. Uh, his son uh, uh, died in a hit and run accident uh, shortly after graduating college, um, and it was both devastating and life transforming for him. He turned from being this bully that I hated to deal with, and he was a genuine bully from a work context, uh, in that um, he used to shame all of us uh, by belittling who we are and what our contributions were, who can foul mouth to, I would try and find any excuse to get out of it. To now becoming the most gentle supporter of, an, of, of entrepreneurs. Uh, he's an investor and he's someone who now has transformed his bullying to the most fun experience. And he's working with him has become a joy after that tragic thing happened to him. He invested in a, in a company called Operation Falafel with the guy on the left. And I worked with them on a communication strategy um, to, to build this, uh, this uh, chain. And, and the key was having fun. And as you could tell here, and he loves to have fun every step of the way. And I really feel like now, Everybody wants to work with him because he became such a joy. Basman Abel, he was you know, just a complete nightmare to work with. So make sure that you're always injecting an element of fun in working. Um, make sure you remind them and yourself that respecting time is critical um, for you and for them. Uh, establish a common emotional language between you and them uh, so that you remove that barrier that we talked about and uh, be present with them by being completely unplugged while you're with them and not being distracted and invite them to do the same. Uh, and then be creative and innovative in, in the learning methods and the learning styles and the learning resources. I mean, it, it bring things that are uh, interesting and entertaining. Um, and then make sure that there is trust uh, and reliability between you guys. Share genuine stories. I've shown, I've shared some examples of stories and I invite you to do the same. And then always seek to understand. By the way, I love this picture. Do you guys know what this picture is? So this is it. For the first time? Which yeah, yeah, this is the first child that was ever photographed when they put a hearing aid in his ear for the first time. Uh, it's, it's a magical experience for, for kids when they hear for the first time. Um, and I've been lucky in that I've actually worked with kids that have had cochlear implants and you see them when they hear for the first time and you just want to cry because it's so exciting. Ooh, um, I think last but not least, um, uh, this is just a format for you to maybe work on. Um, start with an icebreaker to get to know the, the individual or group you're working with agree on a shared set of values, agree on an approach that works for you and works for them, discuss how you might manage a crisis. And by crisis, it could be there's something that came up and I can't get to a call or something, or it could be something bigger. Offer ways to reach you and then document your progress and journal the journey. And um, yeah, mentors win by showing up, um, I think. This is it, and we're, we're done. What are the best ways to uncover someone's talent? Uh, these are a little bit more, more ideas. And, you know, yeah, more ideas for you on what to do with them. Make sure that you, know, you can work with them on contemplating their strengths, um, what they love to do. And then in the end, this is another TED Talk that I thought might be useful for you guys because you'll be working, some of you will be working with introverts, or you may be defining yourself as an introvert. So it's good to watch this TED talk and get some ideas from it. Rama, would you discuss with them? Would you ask them uh, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Or would yeah. you infer that? You would, you can. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I would ask them. 
any opportunity you can get them to reflect on themselves mm -hmm. in a clear way. Don't ask vague questions, ask more pointed, deliberate questions. I think that would be very useful. Okay. Yeah. I think that would be very useful. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. جبتي لي اوبريشن فلافل وصوره سيخ شاورما قد الدنيا وهلا حروح ونحن عندنا لو I'm actually shaking I'm so hungry this is the first time I feel like I'm shaking because I'm really hungry we've been on, on calls all morning طيب ااا كان حدا بده يسال سؤال سوري قبل قبل الشاورما تفضلوا who needed to ask the question did you just get gale yeah, I, I'm sorry. I couldn't do video. I, I can't get it to work, but I, I am here and sorry for jumping in late. But I, I just wanted to um, make sure that if I can provide any resources to the, the mentors, I don't know what your level of, of English and teaching ESL training is, but I have a lot of resources. So if you feel like you're stuck for you know, either conversation ideas, I, I do recommend the TED Talk, well, Susan Cain's TED Talk as well. I think students really enjoy that too. And TED Talks are a great way, although they take up a lot of time when you're online with them, they're a great way for students to learn English. They have the transcript available. So it's a good way for them to listen and read at the same time. And I use this a lot in my, my ESL classes, TED. Susan Cain's book is also really good. It's probably too long for students to want to read at this point, particularly as Rasha said, if they're if their English level is not great. But the TED Talks, I think, are, are really, really a good way. I use it all the time as a teaching tool. So I just wanted to offer my, you know, my lots of years of resources and things I have saved up. If you feel like you need any inspiration or ideas, um, everything from pronunciation videos to, you know, there's a book called Compelling Conversations. It has lots of sort of questioning prompts. Um, and all of that, you know, builds community and relationships. And also there are some fun um, online personality tests, which can sort of see whether you're introvert, extrovert. Those are always, people love to, students love to do those because it's like a low stakes way to find out more about yourself. Yeah. And it allows you to connect with your, your, the student that you're working with. So it all builds relationships. So I would, you know, uh, sorry again to jump in late, but I would reinforce all of that sort of um, um, ice-breaking sort of relationship building before you even get into the nitty-gritty of the topics that, that you plan to be working on. Um, that can be done at the beginning. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. And I, I, would, I would like to ask you guys for feedback. First, did you find the session useful? Was it was, did, did you gain knowledge you didn't have before or insights? Uh, yeah, for me, it is very useful actually to, uh, to know the points I have to look up afterwards. So uh, I'm going to look up some material about emotional intelligence, for example, and, and some stuff that I listed in here. So yeah, it's really good to know to uh, like the points and pinpointing them. So, okay. Great. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah. We're gonna ask you, that's a really good book, yeah. I know, I, I read it through my master degree and I still have it right there. Sometimes I still use it, it's, it's really important. Yeah, um, I'm gonna ask you guys to please send uh, us by email um, just one sentence that's a takeaway from our session today so that we can put a blog post about it. Uh, I'd really appreciate that. The takeaway could be positive, negative, neutral, whatever it is that you think uh, it would be. Um, um, yeah, that would be great. And then uh, what's next? Hiba, uh, Rasha, are we going to um, do the, the, the group call? What, when, and, and if so, when? I have two suggestions. A, I like Gail's suggestion by, by starting with the probably if, if we were to sequence it to by starting the icebreaker with the personality tests and other things that Gail can, can suggest uh, so that they can establish this relationship. Two, um, our next step would be probably to call in a meeting for our students to give them the, the other, I mean, to give them the mentees role and mentors role. So they, they know that they're speaking the same language with their, with their mentors. 
uh, and and third to have the ice breaking session that will probably be an introductory session because before uh, before mentors and mentees either choose each other or agree or i don't know if that would need our our i mean our mediation as who's going to be with who i mean this i haven't really thought of yet so this is what i can think of and definitely and more importantly is the fact that we haven't heard back from projects reports. They didn't even hi. They didn't even acknowledge the fact that we've sent them this request. So maybe Rama, it takes an email from you to tell them that we haven't heard from you and that we went ahead and met with the Cambridge students group. And if you'd like to join, we're going to get something with with our students in Zatari, and then the icebreaker with everybody. So that would be five points, I guess. Okay, great. Okay. Wonderful. Um, can I just say one last thing? Sure. One last sort of comment. Sorry, and sorry, my video is working now. Obviously, so nice to see everybody again. So, um, one of the the takeaways I got from my time in Canada with the Syrian girls that I told you about a couple of days ago was the one girl from Latakia um, said that when she came to Canada, and I'll make this really quick, she suffered from PTSD and couldn't find the supportive community that she had in Syria. And so she talked about the cultural difference between, so in, in Syria, it, it was almost a stigma to have a sort of mental, um, not illness, but a, a psychological disorder. And so people would find support within their own communities, in their families and their extended family and network of friends. When she came to Canada, that didn't exist for her anymore. And so what she found out was in the West, she was expected to, and these are her words, to suck it up. And she said that in perfect colloquial English and sort of deal with her problems because in, in the West, in the US and Canada, we institutionalize mental wellness, meaning that we go to a counselor, we go to a hospital, we go to someone that we don't know, where in, in Arab culture, Syrian culture, you rely on your network of community but she couldn't find that in Canada. So she found that one of the hardest um, obstacles to overcome. So I think what you guys are doing because you're closer to their age is you are gonna help them create more of that community feeling of well-being. And I, I think that's really important to them. And what she did, this one girl from Natakia, she started a soccer club, a football club in Canada with girls that were like refugee schoolgirls. And she said, I found my community and these girls helped me heal, even though they were younger for her. So I thought that was a really inspiring story. So it can go two ways. She was healed by people younger than herself. And I think our students in Zatari or wherever it is that you help them, I think they will hopefully form that community with you. So I just wanted to, that's something that I, a lesson that I didn't know about the difference in how people approach mental wellness. And so I just wanted to tell you that I think what you're doing is really special and really Thank important. you for bringing that up, uh, um, Gail. That's a very important point. And it's one that reminds me that perhaps, uh, Resha, we need to offer this to more than the, just the Zatari students. Like Jad could definitely use um, a mentor. Um, yeah. And I think a, a, a lot of the other students that are that are like outside of uh, Syria that could benefit from that. So let's. Rami Farhan was out of this group. Jad was out of this group. So by all means, next yeah. time we'll invite them and tell them because Jad actually found that kind of consolation because I I wrote yeah. an update on the story by joining a soccer, by joining a, a sorority or whatever. But but he said in the beginning he was going back and he he really had a. Yeah. Jad, already what what's his school may do you remember what's the halt, name halt school oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, jad is in halt so it's even nice that he might be connected to some of the students who are, who are yeah. in england also they're on the same time zone and and maybe that's something that come out of it the okay uh, all right well thank you guys can I say one last thing, Rabbi? I know you're hungry, but uh, I just want to uh, tell all the mentors that if you uh, encounter any problems communicating with the mentees or you found there's a, an issue you cannot deal with, that is normal, that is fine. Uh, and please reach out to us. Uh, you don't feel like, oh, this is my first uh, mission and I'm already having a problem dealing with one of the students. It is, you know, it is normal. 
it's not an easy job. It takes a lot of uh, work and training and patience. And I am personally available. I, I worked with uh, refugee and displaced people for so many years, and I still teach five times a week um, displaced Syrian women inside Syria and outside Syria. So I do have similar experience like what you're gonna go through very soon. So if you have something, please don't be shy, reach out to us. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, you guys, take care. And we'll see you on Slack next time because we're adding you all to the Slack channel, right? And we'll so. keep you posted on our next step, okay? Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Yeah, all right, yeah, good luck.